Welcome to the business edition of PM Express. As you look at COVID-19 and the workplace, is it time that we view our strategies or not? It is believed that the workplace has now become the hotspot for the spread of this pandemic. So how should we go about this? Do we take a second look at our strategies? Or maybe we should all move and work from the house. I'll be engaging chief executives of the Ghana Employee Association, also the chief executive of the Ghana Telecom Chamber, and also the chief executive of some prominent firms as well, as well as medical doctors, and also some that play in this space as the HR directors as well. All these things are more wrapped up on PM Express Business Edition. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break as we look at coronavirus and the workplace and looking at the fact that it's soon being described as the hotspot for the spread of the virus. So what should you be doing if you are an employer? Or what should you be doing if you are there? Is it time to review the strategy because it looks like everything is not working? What about those who say that you can do everything right at the workplace? But what about if your workers go home? What are they going to do? What would they do? Are they also going to stick to those health protocols or not? Well, tonight, it's all about the workplace and coronavirus. That's how I'll be engaging some chief executives of prominent firms, some medical doctors, and also an HR director about the best strategy to go about with this. But first, let's get some understanding on the latest case count with respect to the coronavirus. Now, in terms of new cases recorded, we have at least uh, 1,400 a month in terms of the updates there. Active cases are 4,717. In terms of those who have actually recovered or discharged, is 18,622. The death stands at 129. New cases, there are 641. In all, our case count sounds at uh, 23,463. So it looks like the head of the Ghana Health Service has some advice on the fact that the workplace is increasingly becoming a hotspot. Let's watch him on that. So we are having some outbreaks in work. There's a need to also rehash some of the things. The issue of workplace outbreak is that these people, either they pick it up from the workplace and take it to a community where they live, that enhances the spread, or they bring from immunity and spread at the workplace because certain etiquettes are not followed. It has the potential to create some apathy, enhance the spread, and also reduce productivity. We are um, entreating all to work towards reducing congestion at the workplace in any way that they will have to do to reduce congestion at the workplace. That's the first thing that so that social distancing can be maintained at these places. We are also recommended when a staff develops symptoms, it should be encouraged not to come to work, but rather seek medical attention rather than coming to, to work and ensure that she's all do that. Managers should continue to engage their staff on the safety precautions done there and ensure that the things they need for hand washing, social distancing, um, sanitizers are all available at the workplace. The workplace organization should be done in such a way that there's very little contact as much as possible. Eating together and all those things are things that should not be encouraged. And most importantly, should there be any suspected case or any positive case, Please contact Ghana Health Service. We will quickly come to a risk assessment 
and assist you and tell you who to isolate, who should test, and also follow up these people into their communities and follow up with the testing and isolation so that we can really contain this. Jinda is the head of the Ghana Health Service, giving us some advice on what you have to do in terms of dealing with the situation at your workplace. Now, let me get on to our virtual platforms and with all our guests out there, that is the chief executive, actually, of the Ghana Employee Association is also here there with us. You also have the chief executive of the, actually, the Technology Chamber as well. And thank you, uh, lady doctors, gentlemen, for joining us on this discussion. Let me first start with Mr. Frimpon, uh, Alex Frimpon, chief executive of the Ghana Employee Association, in terms of the fact that as an employer, are you worried about what is happening and even what are your members also saying as well? Mr. Frimpon, if you can hear me, I'm saying, are you worried? Are you, so, try and unmute yourself, Mr. Frimpon, in terms of your connection, please. Yes. So, Mr. Frimpon, well, I mean, you, I hope the, you can hear me now. I can hear you now. The Ghana Employers Association, okay. Looking at the fact that we are hearing that the workplace is now becoming a hotspot for the spread of the coronavirus, uh, are you worried? Yeah, certainly so. Um, the association is very worried about current developments concerning the spread of the pandemic in, in the workplace. Um, since the outbreak in March, mm -hmm. we have had a lot of discussions with um, employers and also uh, with other authorities and also even the tripartite, all aimed at ensuring that we deepen the implementation of the protocols that would stem the, the tide of the spread um, in our various workplaces. But we noticed that there have been some slippages and uh, we are relapsing and all these things are happening. So uh, members are generally more concerned about these developments. Uh, we need to work together to make sure that we are the workplace of this pandemic. Mr. Pippon, do I get from you in your submission that it looks like you relaxed things a little bit and that is why we've seen these numbers picking up? Well, I, uh, um, that is not the impression. What I'm trying to say is that um, when the whole thing started, employers were very keen in making sure that all these things were observed. And currently, you realize that the challenges employers have is that that the Ghana Health Service, WHO, and all the other prescriptions have been followed to the letter. But you know, employees live in communities. So the challenge now is, is it a spread from the community that is being brought to the workplace or what? Because I am not sure there's any employer who has not put in place all these protocols that we need. Um, in terms of busing employees to and from work, many organizations who either to take a bus um, that would convey about 100, uh, sorry, about 80 employees mm. to work. And now being about 30 or 40 mm. to ensure that there's physical and social distancing. When you go to the canteens, many of them run shifts in workplaces. Many of them are working from home. Others are also making sure that they, 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 they rotate the staff who come to work. And even so, they do um, a lot of spacing to ensure that there's no congestion whatsoever. So we need to delve deeper into why the, work, the workplace is uh, being hit by the spread of the pandemic. Because many businesses, when it comes to hand washing, sanitizing, all the hygienic protocols have been fully observed. We have had to go around to, check, to visit more than, more than 200 of our members. And the strict observation of these protocols, at times you wonder how they're able to cope with even the expenses involved. But that is the contribution of businesses to the, 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 the stoppage of the pandemic. So in, in their various organizations. So honestly, we need to really delve deeper into why the pandemic is spreading into um, um, the workplace, mm. given the fact that employ employers have spent a lot of time, resources, education, sanitization of all employees, and also in third parties who visit them in, by way of making sure that 
we are able to control the pandemic. So I think we need to delve deeper into the head. Uh, Interesting. To find out what exactly is happening. Interesting there, Mr. Frimpo. Let me try and bring in the HR director of uh, Nyaho Medical Center, Madam. And, and for you, as an HR person, looking at what is happening, uh, are you trying to revise your notes and what you tell your bosses? Because it looks like you're doing everything that you have to do right, but still this is happening. Um, uh, uh, that's right. And, and you know, I, I think that um, as the caseload increases across the country, I think we will see the um, impact and the effect of community spread within our work spaces. And I think um, that's a reality that we just have to um, um, come around. Um, and I think what we uh, are doing um, is... Uh, you know, we've got a business continuity plan in place. Um, we are consistently and continually communicating with our staff. Uh, and I, I feel that the key really with this is in terms of education uh, and communication and being consistent with your communication because people naturally revert back to default in terms of behavior. Uh, and so the consistent communication with staff to bring to the fore of their minds the awareness of the um, 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 processes and the things that they need to do to ensure uh, that they minimize spread, even in their communities, um, is really important. So for us, um, you know, from the beginning of the pandemic, we've had a business continuity plan in place. Um, we've had um, a deliberate communication strategy to engage with our staff. Um, and for me, um, as the caseload load continues, um, it, it's about that continual education of staff to make them aware um, of their role in terms of uh, curbing, curbing the spread um, of, of the disease. Well, Madam, you, you manage, I mean, a health sector in terms of human resource. I mean, your situation is that you are just waiting for the challenge that comes every day or the approach has to be different. Um, I mean, obviously, we are a health facility, and as a health facility, um, infection prevention and control is what we do. It's part of what we do every day um, to um, ensure that the patients that come to us um, um, have um, an experience quality care uh, in terms of uh, the experience with us. So you're right, infection prevention and, uh, and control is something that we do every day. Um, however, I guess the extent of this pandemic goes beyond everyday uh, infection prevention and control. Um, and therefore, you have to do extra. You have to go the extra mile to ensure that, um, that the, the spread um, in terms of uh, community spread that comes into the organization is limited in, in, in as much as possible. Dr. Davis is a, a healthcare occupational specialist. And there are some who have raised concerns about the approach in dealing with this. I mean, this is a bit about mass testing, shutting down businesses and all the rest. I mean, the bulk of storage distribution uh, company, transport company has uh, asked the staff to go on briefly. Cocoa Board has done a similar thing. Ministry of Finance has done that similar thing as well. If we continue to do this by everybody go home, mass testing. Doc, I want to find out from you as a health an occupational person as well. Do you think that most companies are doing the right thing in terms of their whole approach to this whole COVID-19 and how they are handling the situation? Good evening. Um, well, the first thing I would say is uh, COVID-19 uh, is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So we need to uh, modify our perception mm. uh, towards this new reality. Um, there is always the, the immediate reaction. Sometimes you would call it a panic reaction. Mm. Uh, like you're saying, companies are, are shutting down. Um, you, people come up, come to work, and then. They hear their landlord has shut their, their offices down because he or she has had there's an infection or there's confirmed infection. Um, 
Well, from the educational health point of view, that would, I would say, come as uh, one of the later resource because um, there's a saying in occupational health, uh, work is good. And uh, it's important for uh, economic reasons. Uh, it's even important for health reasons. Um, work promotes productivity. Without work, there's no real economy. We need to keep the businesses running. You know, so uh, if we start shutting down, then the question is, how many times can we shut down? And how long can we shut down mm. for? Mm. So it starts to affect the first, and also not just the company's first, but the workers' first, because people um, have mouths to feed. They have families to take care of. Um, so companies or workplaces need a plan because work takes about 10 or more hours of our day. This is more than half. So work is a huge contributing factor to our life. And the pandemic is the heart of our life now. And we need to survive, not, not just to win, but we need to survive. We need to, we need to, to go on and try to beat this somehow and beat this still standing. Talk about standing and all the rest, but I'm asking myself, how sustainable is this approach? That, and it backs to our main question about whether it is time for us to review this approach where, where we detect uh, maybe two or three cases at the workplace, there's mass testing, and then everybody is asked to go home, work from home. I mean, how long can we continue doing this? If tomorrow, a month down the line again, there's one case, do we shut down again? Is this approach good, or there could be other things they could be doing? Yes, uh, there are other things that could be done. The, um, actually, um, the, the steps uh, in the West is to try and uh, control the spread of uh, COVID-19 stem from a simple principle, where the aim of the employer should be to provide a safe workplace, a healthy working environment, where work activity can um, continue in a healthy and safe manner while keeping the workers safe. Now, if you do a risk analysis of your work activity, and mind you, work activities are different. You have white collar jobs, you have blue collar jobs, you have uh, informal sector jobs. Even the hawker, they have a job, you know. So you do a risk analysis of, this, of, your, of your activity area, you realize that, well, the common hazard is there, that is the virus. It's, it's a pandemic, it's everywhere. You need to find out where the sources of uh, transmission are coming from. You need to establish whether it's a work, an ongoing workplace transmission or an ongoing community transmission. And what we know currently is that we have an active community transmission now. So we need to plan based on what we know. We need to put the controls in place. There are administrative controls, there are engineering controls, there is uh, training, education, just like one of uh, my colleague panelists just said, we need to uh, continue the training, the education to, to bring about a behavioral change because with the behavioral change, then people behave in a certain way in the workplace and are able to take it into the community. It spreads and everybody follows suit, you see, because uh, if you're going to spend a lot of money in the workplace, buying masks, sanitizers, fixing hand washing uh, 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 units, and yeah, you don't enforce or you don't train or you don't educate, then the people that come to work you know, they, 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 they play a small part and then they go home and then they switch it, mm. you know. But the thing is that Kofi Anama or Kwame mm -hmm. or Kavana or AC will come to the workplace, they will do what they need to do, but they, they will take a car, they will go home, they will go and meet with their families at home, they have neighbors, and they will probably now the churches are open, and they'll probably have some interaction. How do they understand these interactions? Because they will 
come back into your recipe. And mm-hmm. just like the deputy minister of health said, well, if you start testing in any state, you will pick up a positive somewhere. But what do you do when you do pick up a positive? You need to, to be calm and not spread fear. You need to uh, go by the plan, your business continuity plan that you have in place. And then you, you put in place the measures. If you have an occupational health service or an occupational health uh, physician or advisor, mm-hmm. you could contact the person or reach out to the local health facility, just like the minister said, and then they would come in and help you through the, 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 the process. But the process doesn't really end there because there are many, 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 many other issues involved with relation to the businesses. They lose a lot of money, not just by buying sanitizers and, and many other things. They lose money from wet absenteeism. They even lose money from presenteeism, mm. which is when people show up even when they are not well. Mm. And these are people who are even bigger risk to the workplace. Mm. And sometimes it's because some of these people are afraid of losing their job if they stay out of work. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about having a plan in place, it, it's, a, it's a whole thing. Let, let me move to another medical doctor, and Dr. Smeni, she's a health economist as well. Mom, let me just find out from you, in terms of the approach, are you excited or encouraged or you think that maybe businesses, they can do more to move the support from just the workplace to maybe the communities that I live, um, you live? If you can unmute uh, your microphone, you. uh, Doc. Yes, I have. Thank you. I was just um, saying that you think you that uh, we should move the support from just the workplace as someone who owns the business to maybe the communities that uh, I live, that uh, you live, because it looks like everything is being done well at the workplace, but back home, we all drop our guts. Yes. Um, uh, good evening to um, your viewers, and good evening to um, our fellow panelists. This is a very interesting topic. Um, I believe that the COVID-19 situation or pandemic has brought us all together in a major ecosystem. Mm. We are connected one way or the other. And that essentially means that um, you cannot look at the workplace alone, Mm. um, unfortunately. And so when I saw the topic you had fit in, I said, well, the workplace does not live alone. It lives in an ecosystem. And the ecosystem is um, comprised people who move from home to the workplace. Mm. So I would look at it not only from the communities where the communities spread or infections are happening, but I would look at it in terms of the continuum, the whole um, chain, value chain, until you get to the workplace. Mm. Now, we have some companies where people are coming from, of course, various communities with different levels of sanitation. Um, You cannot discriminate employees because Mm. perhaps they live in poorer communities and so encourage more people from perhaps um, better off communities to only come to work. Um, and so you would have people who are using public transport, for instance. Mm. And if we we can tell from an environmental scan, we can tell that even trotter drivers are not using, trotter drivers and their mates are not using the, the mask. Those who attempt to use them, you would see that they are not wearing them appropriately. They, you see them around the chin and other forms, you know, I think just to avoid being arrested or something like that. Now, there are very, the, the interesting bit about the COVID-19 is that it's not only through um, contact through the droplets. Mm-hmm. It's also rest on surfaces. Okay. And so it could be that um, you may have, somebody may have occupied a seat who was infected and you just got on board. And it might not be the mate to trans- transmit the disease to you, but you would pick it up from one surface or the other. You move from the work, you enter your workplace, various contacts, the files that we transport. We still do a lot of um, companies use hard, um, hard copies, yeah. you know. And so, and so in a time like this, we are going to have to look at the environment from which we, we are living, the environments in which we work, the technologies that we employ in these environments, um, also, we, we have to think about even the, the rotational, I think we spoke to the Nyaho Clinic HR manager, who would, I'm sure, give us insights into the need for even the rotation of staff. 
Um, and so it's the food, the continuum that I think we should look at, not only the communities we are living in, we should look at how we transport ourselves to um, our workplaces. Now, people who work in, say, um, the offices, for instance, happen to eat over the weekends. They may go to the market. We have market women who are, some are practicing social distancing, some are not. No, not we also yeah. have those who are not wearing the mask, and so on and so forth. So it, the discussion should go broader, you know, should be broader than just, you know, the workplace. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's more of using, ad, um, uh, addressing the causes of the causes, you know. So getting to the roots of the issues, because um, as a workplace environment by itself, with cleaners working every morning, sanitizing, cleaning the surfaces, I do not think any responsible employer would not get his workplace, his or her workplace ready to uh, accommodate healthy staff. Mm -hmm. It's rather the importation of the disease from the communities in which we live. But the mode through which some are also getting infected should also be looked at. When the, the initial lockdown came up, you saw that there was a lot of enforcement as well. Um, it looks like things have laxed right now. Do you think that that is also contributing to this and maybe we should be doing more as private sector to support government in terms of enforcing this? The support, the first of all, let's go to the lockdown period. It was an interesting time um, in the sense that, you see, right from the get-go for, for this uh, COVID-19, I could foresee a huge tension between um, the health component and the economics of it. And it's because, um, and that's exactly what came to, came to play. When, we, we, when we, we had the lockdown, many people were crying for more. There were initial in, in, in resistance from people, certain quarters. What are we going to do? What are employers going to do? Are we going to be paying salaries for people not working? Are we, um, is government attempting to collapse our businesses? You know, all, all manner of considerations came on board. Now, during the lockdown, I had expected to see um, a lot of um, local or community education. And I think to an extent that was done. Um, and the restrictions did help. But it was the restrictions of uh, the, um, uh, the lockdown. How long was it going to be sustainable? No country, I believe no country is ever going to be able to sustain such um, uh, uh, such a, a directive, if we call it, uh, because it is still a challenge. Businesses have to work. If, we, if businesses don't work, government does not get taxes. Businesses have to work. Businesses have to be up and running for the mental health of the people. Businesses have to work because people have homes, people have households to take care of. And you know, it is, it is a whole environment of everything and everybody involved in this system that we must address. If, for instance, that the, the, the lockdown had continued, what was it going to be? You remember a bit, I mean, we all experienced it. Uh, a system was to be designed for health workers to move um, and, and certain sectors which were part of the essential services to be contained. Now, there also came the question of how long was government going to be able to feed people in communities, very poor communities, who, whose daily livelihoods or whose livelihoods depend on petty trading, for instance. They are also part of the ecosystem of this um, space. Now, um, after the, the, the lockdown, I suppose the return to work also meant that I suppose that uh, employers were going to be innovative enough. And to a large extent, a lot have been innovative. But their innovation is fighting against a very strong virus, which is mutating. You remember um, a few weeks ago, the WHO came out to say that um, even the COVID-19 was airborne. And then another perspective came up that it's not airborne. If it were airborne or it is airborne, what does it imply? Should we even be in an environment, a wet space where it's confined? We have structures within which we have to work. Meaning if you have a boss whose office you enter, whether he wears a mask or not, or whether um, some droplets have managed to escape the mask, it essentially means that the environment, the entire environment is infected. And that means that you could, by just entry into somebody's office, get infected. So um, it's a very tense 
extent um, relationship that health is having on economics. And I think that we have to keep um, we have to keep evolving with the with the challenges that come that is that are coming up with the COVID nineteen mm. uh, um, rollout. Mm. Doc, I'll, I'll be coming back to you for us to look at the whole impact of all this on the broader economy. But in all these discussions about dealing with these challenges at the workplace and all the rest, there's been this vogue or whatever is about working from home. Internet, data, availability. There are some who have tried this and it's already worked for them. David Dindar is the chief executive of the telecoms uh, uh, technology chamber. Sorry, Derry, uh, is our market ready for this? Because there are some who are still complaining that, yes, there is data, but there is, there's nothing like that personal engagement with people. And looking at all these things about strategies and all the rest, working from home, do you think that, that is what we all have to accept and work with right now? Um, yes, uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity to engage um, the co-panelists and uh, the audience out there. Now, um, in, in terms of the current situation that we find ourselves in, I think that it, it has come a time that we have to adapt, even if we are not ready. So we need to find ways and means to be able to still provide value um, to our customers using um, available channels mm. um, in terms of, of um, in terms of um, our continuous or business business continuity and continuous engagement um, with our customers. So yes, and one of the ways of still continuing working is working from home. And that's one, 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 one thing that has come that we, we need to adapt to. I think that the culture of working from home or the idea of working from home is not new in certain mm, circles companies. or in certain industries. Um, it, it has been there for a very long time and especially made even more um, more more evident or it can be, it can be observed more in the digital community or in the in the in the tech ecosystem where a lot of work um a lot of people in the in the tech ecosystem already work from home mm -hmm. and that's where we have the whole concept of business process outsourcing um people being able to stay in their homes and working for other um companies in other countries the the, the key dynamic here is that now working from home has become all very very domesticated that means that we've come back to our local setting where now we have certain challenges, especially when it comes to internet connectivity, right? And where now the demand for domestic services that require work from home has gone up. Mm. At first, that demand was outside the country. So we have companies outside the country that demanded some locals to work. So the people who were working will, will inadvertently be given the internet, how do you call it, tools to be able to connect and work. Now, companies in Ghana who now have to work, let their team members work from home, will have to now spend more money mm. to be able to provide um, the needed tools for their employees or their team members to work from home. And that is where sometimes the challenge comes. Mm. But I think that the key challenge of working from home is really the pre-COVID culture. If pre-COVID, you have a certain um, culture of being able to do work remotely, then in COVID times, it is quite easy to make that transition. Okay. But if pre-COVID, your work culture does not lend itself for remote working, then the adjustment or the transition can become very difficult. Okay. So one of the key things is being able to, one, establish that culture of being able to have the discipline to coordinate work outside the office. In our, in our terrain, in our part of the world, bosses would like to see you working. So there's certain element that does not make it easy for work from home, you mm -hmm. know, to become ideal for certain working environment, right? But a critical ingredient here is one, do you have the culture of coordinating work outside offices, right? Do you have, have you been able to prepare the needed expenditure or do you have the money to be able to support mm -hmm. your team members um, to be, able to work from home. And even more critical is, do you have the tools or the goal management system to be able to manage mm. working outside home? Because now you're not seeing anybody, you can't walk to somebody's desk and say, hey, what are you doing? 
You have to be able to coordinate that over a virtual platform. How do you know whether the person is sleeping mm -hmm. and telling you that the internet is not working while the internet is working? How do you how do you respond to um, um, children in the environment yeah. who are disturbing um, the, the, the the team member from really act, um, properly engaging in work in, in the in the kind of environment that the person needs? How do you even create that work setting? Because certain working environment requires a certain atmosphere, yeah. which requires a certain ambience to be able to deliver. So if people are working from home, as, a, as, an, as an organization, are you able to provide that setup that your team members need to be working from home? So yes, working from home is a new quote-unquote oh, no. normal, is a new ideal, but it presents very critical realities that organizations need to figure how, out how to surmount. Mm. And that is where you need a proper work from home plan. And if you're not sure of, you can then learn from um, um, organizations that are already doing it or get work with consultants to be able to work, get that done. And even now, I think there's a time for large organizations to engage startups because the startups are used yeah, to working too. from home yeah. because of constraints. So there's a time for big organizations to start learning from the younger organizations that are startups to be able to carve out a very viable model when it comes to work from home. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll be coming back to you on the infrastructure, but let me get back to the chief executive of the Ghana Employees Association and also the HR director uh, for uh, Nyaho Medical Center. In all these things, work from home, reviewing the workplace policy, what has been the impact on the bottom line already? I believe that at a time when people might be calling for more, uh, it's really taken ahead of your members. How are you managing the situation? Apart from the core medical staff, the administrative staff, are you asking some people to go home? Are you saying that, listen, I need more money because we need to invest in these critical sectors? How has it been for you? Um, so, so for us, um, as part of our business continuity plan, um, one of the things that we had to do was present what we called new ways of working. Mm. Um, so essentially highlighting or, or dividing our staff into what we call essential and non-essential workers. Mm or a health facility. So mm. clearly our clinicians are, are core to what we do um, and the services that we provide. Um, but we have a small set of um, non-clinical staff, my team, HR, finance, procurement, um, um, marketing and sales, et cetera, who have the ability to be able to work from home. And that's essentially what we, we try to do is um, certainly in the thick of the um, pandemic, uh, when we switched on our business continuity plan, um, we mandated that non-essential workers actually work from home. Um, and it's interesting the, the comments that were, were made earlier on. Listen, working from home doesn't work for every category of employee. Uh, and, and let's be clear about that. And every organization has to uh, kind of assess and make a decision that um, um, suits their environment. And there's a key word that was used earlier on around organizations are set up to create value at the end of the day for their, for their clients. Uh, and therefore you structure yourself to ensure that you continue to create value. Um, and for us, our, our new ways of working um, allowed us to literally to say to our, uh, what we call our non-essential uh, workers to work from home. What it did, it, it minimized um, the number of staff that we had in the center. And clearly, when you're talking about the need to socially distance um, um, within the workplace uh, to uh, reduce um, the spread of, of the disease, uh, for us, this was an important decision um, to make. Um, uh, and then, and then, you know, it's about uh, uh, again the comments. One of the comments that was raised earlier on was. How do you therefore um, ensure that when they are working from home that they are productive? Um, and we have had to very quickly um, adapt and pivot um, uh, to, um, um, to respond to the reality that we faced. Uh, and therefore, you know, we, we, we moved into a space of having all our meetings online virtually. Uh, so we use Microsoft Teams uh, to collaborate uh, in terms of our working practices. Um, um, and, uh, you know, for me personally, um, it has, uh, the, the earliest people talking about different cultures 
um, within the organization, whether you have a culture that enables working from home or not. I, I can honestly say that prior to uh, the COVID pandemic, we were probably uh, um, an organization where, you know, um, coming into the office, um, doing a lot of our meetings in terms of face-to-face -face was very much the culture uh, mm -hmm. that, that we had. Um, but, you know, our ability to pivot and respond to the circumstances we found ourselves uh, meant that we were able to continue to drive value to our clients um, by leveraging technology um, and just being creative in terms of how we work, the ways that we work, uh, and, um, and trusting, uh, you know, that um, our employees that needed to work from home uh, would engage with technology, would engage uh, with the various meetings that we had in place to uh, continue business. Um, I, I actually personally, I, you know, I, I've been working from home mm. um, since mid-March, oh. essentially. And I find that, uh, and I don't know whether the other panelists actually experience the same, that you tend to actually work longer days. You don't have the separation of going, you know, going to work, the drive to work, the, uh, you know, eight to five that you do work mm. at, you know, at your desk, and then the separation in terms of the drive home. When you're actually working from home, um, you know, it's continuous. Mm, you, you know, mm, you, you probably mm, watch mm, less mm. Um, because you don't have those separations. Mm. Um, and so, uh, you know, our the challenge that we had to face was actually have a real deliberate conversation with our staff that are working from home um, about pacing themselves, okay. you know, about taking breaks, you know, about exercise, um, because uh, an employee's mental health and mental state dictate their productivity at the end of the day. So, so working from home presented different challenges for us. And we had to therefore engage our staff to ensure that they continue to be as productive as they could be. Let me bring in the chief executive of the Ghana Employer Association, Mr. Alex Frimpon. Um, what are your members telling you in terms of employers? And does it look like maybe working from home has come to stay? Mr. Alex Simponi, if you're there. Let me, Mr. Alex yes, Simponi, it's um, like you I have to mute your you, microphone, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I'm just saying that what are your members telling you in terms of the Ghana Employee Association that so far trying to push this working from home? Has it been that good for them and maybe it has come to stay? Well, I think that for now it has come to stay and uh, businesses would have to really devise means to make sure that mm. it works and also facilitate their businesses. Um, like my colleague from Yahoo rightly said, um, when you want to embark on that journey, um, it, it's a whole uh, new thing altogether. So one, how do you provide the needed infrastructure for employees to operate effectively uh, wherever they may be in the country? Again, how would the, the, the business be able to absorb the cost in doing that? What are the policies that will guide uh, organizations and their officials or functionaries in working from home? So these are all some of the uh, discussions that are ongoing to make sure that once this has become part of the business ecosystem, we should, we should be able to cope. Again, Many of the organizations are now using virtual meetings, which that uh, was unknown. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if we are going to observe strict social distancing, physical distancing, the business must go on. So you mm -hmm. but in whatever location where you find yourself, you should be able to use the platform to contribute to uh, management meetings, uh, board meetings, and all, all other areas that you will be required to share ideas uh, on the um, on the way forward. Mm -hmm. Employee community is also becoming a, a very, very important. So many organizations are developing other innovative ideas, creation of uh, WhatsApp groups, um, improving the internet facilities to make sure that businesses are in touch with mm -hmm. their um, employees mm -hmm. and the 
and other stakeholders. Mr. Pimpo, just so sorry to interrupt a little bit. Things. In terms of the data mm -hmm. that you are picking from your members, are more of your members now going virtual? Sure. A, lot, a, good, a good number of them are, are going virtual. Um, in addition to that, some of them are also doing job rotation. Okay. Maybe 10 people can come to work today, or maybe in a week, another 10 will come, depending upon the size. But we must also understand that not all operations can yield to working from home, the work from home idea. Mm -hmm. For instance, for a manufacturing concern, the key operatives cannot work from home. They must necessarily be physically present uh, in the factory, but the support and ancillary staff can equally do so. Okay. So even for those who will be standing by the machine, how can you streamline the operations to make sure that those who attend work and are operating the machines, there are new ways of operating to really conform to the standard of mm. uh, physical distancing. Okay. So businesses are going through um, a lot of reviews, simulations to make sure that they are able to cope with the pandemic because businesses must survive. And if businesses don't survive, the country cannot survive employees cannot survive. Indeed, so businesses must that. survive. All my panelists, please uh, hold on. We take a quick break and we'll be right back as we try to round up on this discussion in terms of COVID-19 and the workplace. Is it time for us to view our strategies or not? We'll be right back after this break. Don't you go away as well as my panelists. It might be a good time to catch up uh, with a, a cup of coffee or tea. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition. As you look at the uh, curb and the spread at the workplace, as you look at the numbers, the Ghana Health Service says that the workplace is becoming a hotspot for the spread of uh, COVID-19. So what should we be doing? Is it time for us to review our strategies in terms of how we kept this thing? And it's great to have all these wonderful panelists that joining me for this discussion as well. Let me go to Dr. David, uh, an occupational health expert. And I'm going to push this question to all of you. Uh, looking at what is happening right now, would you recommend another localized restriction or tough restriction across the country or certain regions? Doc, as a health uh, occupational person, what's your thought on this? If you cannot meet your microphone, Doc, uh, would you propose or recommend, looking at how the numbers are going up, a more localized restriction to government? from the medical perspective? Uh, that, that's a, a, a tough one. I think, I think that um, uh, at this point, uh, it's more about reinforcing uh, the preventive um, strategy. It's more about prompt identification of, of uh, infected persons, isolation, testing isolation, and, and treatment. It's more about um, um, allocating the resources to the right uh, people. Uh, the healthcare uh, sector uh, needs need more resources. Uh, my colleagues uh, look like they are, they are getting overwhelmed, so they need all the support they can get because now we have active community spread. Uh, it, does not, it does not really matter if you lock down or lock up. Mm. If the hospitals, the, the healthcare uh, practitioners to not have what they need to do their work. It doesn't matter if you lock up, uh, if in the in the workplace you don't have systems in place mm. to identify suspect infections, identify them, test them, isolate them, um, and also uh, find ways and means to ensure that the economy keeps running while we battle this thing. So uh, masking up using uh, the, your, your proper hand washing strategy, uh, sanitizing, um, ensuring social distances, social distancing in all your workplace activities or even community and personal activities will be the best way. And all okay. over the world, we know that okay. communities and spaces where these things are being implemented. Yeah. So, so, so Doc, you, 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 you wouldn't recommend in 30 seconds, you're not going to recommend for another lockdown? Let me go to uh, Dr. Sumini. In 30 seconds as well, uh, from a, a health economist's point of view, would you propose another lockdown? Um, 30 I seconds. would not propose another lockdown just yet. I would rather 
um, recommend enhanced, especially in the education, community education aspect. I would recommend that further education is done because um, the myths and the fake news are still very powerful. Um, some still do not believe that COVID-19 is actually a disease. Unfortunately, we're also in a political season. Mm. And so, so many kinds of spins have been put on this disease, which need to be separated from the politics of our country and in okay. a year like this. Mm. So I would not recommend um, a further lockdown because business must run. The redeem a tech expert, should lockdown be the way for us? 30 seconds. Should we lock down again? Um, I, I, I think we shouldn't go there yet. I think that we need to look at the data um, and explore new opportunities. But two things. One of the key recommendations would be that as a country, we need to stay positive as a people. I think that fear is another way that uh, we can become our, our reflexes to reacting um, well to, to a pandemic Mm. can be more or less impaired if we, we have a fear. Mm. Um, the other thing is that we need to, uh, the customers of services should start um, realigning their lifestyles to wanting to give some of these service providers some leeway when it comes to how they receive these services. So okay. customers should start inclining themselves to collect, getting some of their services via and digital okay. channels so that um, companies that provide these services will not be forced to go to the okay. office or use physical um, means to provide these services. And that, I believe, can help with social distancing and can help uh, potentially assuage the impact of the pandemic on our, on our society. Thank you, Derek. The HR director now who 30 seconds lockdown again. In 30 seconds. No, I don't think. You know, I think I think it's a disease burden that we need to get used to. I think COVID is here to stay in different, okay. in one form or the other. Okay. Um, and therefore, it's how we prepare to tackle this disease by providing the right PPEs for our healthcare, healthcare workers to um, 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 address the patients okay. that walk through the door, okay. I think is key. Um, but, but, but this is going to be a disease okay. burden uh, for, for, I'm sure, many years to come. Well, all too soon I have to draw the curtain down. Immense thanks to our health uh, experts for joining us, our chief executives as well. And I know that I know that the debate will still go on in your homes as to whether we've done right or we need to review the strategy in terms of controlling this other workplace. My name is George Yafe. Enjoy your day.